yeah, I'm one of the senior backend developers, especially on the mobile team. I'm an Android guy, and um, this we have a this is our farmer's flagship app right here. Um, my colleague uh, David here in the room is one of our very talented Android developers. Um, so yeah, this this app right here essentially just lets uh, customers self-service their policies. You know, pay. Um, I think add new policies into or get quotes for them. Um, it's a really innovative app, and I, I really like working on the uh, the mobile team. Um, it, it's kind of it's a great environment. Um, so this um, this workshop that I'm putting on here today for all of you, I've been doing it for about, I started in about November. I've been teaching programming um, for several years um, from Python. I've done a little bit of JavaScript um, workshops, and I just constantly noticed that what I call novice level developers and even intermediate. I even noticed that in all the companies I've worked at that people get really good at like JavaScript or Python or whatnot. But then some of what I call the tooling of command line Git and even GitHub, it just kind of gets missed, right? Um, and what I've noticed is the people that are kind of, you know, whiz bang really, you know, developers are really pushing stuff out. They're also really good at the tooling. Um, so I put this workshop together, kind of developed it, and I, this is like the 10th or 11th time I've done it. Um, so it's continually getting better. And I, as I get feedback from everybody, um, I add little sections in um, or add other kinds of tools. I'm also um, currently developing what I call an intermediate command line Git and GitHub, so more the advanced stuff that I can't necessarily cover in like, um, in like a two-hour-ish session. And I'll probably be doing that at Hack for LA sometime in the next month or two. Okay, so I talked a lot, um, and just as a reminder, these, these PowerPoints are for me, so I know what to talk about to y'all. <laughs> and most of the workshop here is gonna be highly interactive, where y'all are gonna be working through exercises and working with each other, okay? So yeah, a little bit about me, um, senior backend developer at Farmers Insurance. Our, most of our mobile backend is in, uh, no, all of our mobile backend is in Node Express, um, which is very relevant to JavaScript LA. Um, I'm also a core contributor to Yellowbrick, a uh, open source Python machine learning visualization library. Um, and then I'm, I organize uh, PyData Los Angeles. There's a, a conference last year and an upcoming one um, the next year. I, and lastly, I'm a self-caught career changer. I used to work in um, quality improvement consulting and other things. And then about, I don't know, seven years ago, I just really got deep into Excel and I realized that I just loved programming and one thing led to another and here I am writing JavaScript and Node and playing with Python on the side. Um, so yeah. And, oh yeah, okay, I'll put that up in a second. Um, and then before I, I go back, um, do, anything I say here, these are not the opinions of farmers insurance. <laughs> they do not resep, you know, they do not, <laughs> do not represent um, the organization, or not necessarily my views in a week or two. As we all know, technologies come and go in two weeks. I might be talking about how great jQuery is again. <laughs> <laughs> and then lastly, really important, um, meetups, they just don't magically happen. So let's give a, a round of applause to our organizers here. It takes a lot of work, and they're not, meetup organizers are not necessarily paid. <laughs> but it's really, really important um, um, just to thank the people that organize the community um, because it, it is tough and it's voluntary and um, you, know, you don't have a community unless you, you thank the people volunteering to do it. Really, really important. Um, lastly, also, I don't know who the heck made this, this photo of me, but I, I had no idea and about a week ago I was just like, being like, okay, I got this uh, meetup next week, and I saw this. I literally was laughing for five minutes. <laughs> My wife thought I had like, gone a little crazy. Um, so for those of you that were not like alive or <laughs> children of the 90s, my last name is Danielson. <laughs> so growing up, I used to get the Danielson, like the Karate Kid all the time. So I kind of thought this was cool because this is like Neo from The Matrix, like his body, right, you know? And then like he's all grown up and now he's like a ninja. And I'm just like, man, I finally made it. <laughs> anyway, okay, amazing photo. So whoever did that, thank you. Um, so next thing, um, we're getting really close to getting started here. Um, as we go through this um, kind of like workshop, uh, for those of you maybe who haven't played around on the command line or Git, maybe never, 
Um, and those of you that are maybe more seasoned you know, developers, you're gonna recognize this. Um, of don't give up. Um, there's always, you're going between, I have no idea what I'm doing. And then I figured it out and like laser beams are shooting out. And then like, like futuristic techno music is playing. And then you're gonna go back and being like, I have no idea what I'm doing. So it's okay, deep, take a deep breath. Just this morning I was working on some uh, open source and I was trying to test things in Windows on app there. And I must have spent two hours and I'm just like, screw this. <laughs> I'm gonna go for a walk. Um, so whenever you get a little frustrated with whatever exercise we're doing here, or just in general in your professional career, my message is there's nothing wrong with you. You're not a sad looking confused dog. You probably did something bad. I know that dog did something bad. Um, just take a break and it's gonna be okay. So the agenda um, we're gonna do is make sure everybody's set up. We're gonna go through the command line. Remember, this is more of an intro novice level workshop. We're gonna go through some Git. And then um, we're gonna work through GitHub, we're gonna wrap up, and then I have a workshop evaluation that I'd like to get feedback on how I did um, or what I can improve on. Um, so there you go. So um, before we kind of go into setup, um, I, what's I, something I believe is really, really, really important is the stereotype of programmers hacking and slashing away in a basement at all hours of the night and trying to figure it out, completely wrong. Programming software development is a team sport. So when you're having that moment where I have no idea what I'm doing, go for a walk or ask your teammate, right? Um, because as some of you a little more you know, experienced may realize it's just like an extra comma or something that maybe you're just a little tired. Maybe that extra you know, uh, curly brace, you just didn't see it in your linter. Yeah, 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 I have that all the time too. Or you, you actually just forgot to git add and push it up. Or, but we're gonna cover that later. So what I want you all to do, turn to your left and your right and just say, hi, my name is whatever. This is why I'm here tonight. <laughs> okay, do we got any good to <laughs> Who wants to introduce their like buddy or new code buddy with like a great superpower? Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> Superpower is having no powers. I like that. Okay. <laughs> okay, well, what are some other ones? Okay. Awesome. Okay, so it's like Google Plus, right? You don't have to Google for answers, it's just in there, right? I like that. Okay, okay well, what about y'all? Any other superpowers? I love that. Didn't they make a movie about that or something? Like yeah, it's called Adam Sandler movie, right? Yeah, what, remote, was it time, time Stoppers? I think was, that was one of them. As a child, I was a huge fan of charm TV show, especially I like Piper, the middle sister, so uh -huh. I was her power with the fist dance. I love that. <laughs> you could do a lot of good and a lot of bad with freezing time, right? Yeah. There have to be maybe a little control on that. So super villain or su superhero, super villain, right? Yeah. A any other? Um, Eric would, would like to uh, speak every language. Okay, so I like that. Pretty, that's pretty cool. Like have the babble fish in your ear, right? Exactly. Okay, I love it. Okay. Yeah. This is Jay, and he'd like to read minds, but I think that's a horrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so would the superpower be read minds, but the, like, the flaw, you can't turn it off, right? <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> Love it. Okay. Any others before we kind of continue on? Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, this is Lisa, Brian, and Johnny. Johnny has uh, no interest in the superpower. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, Lisa wants to uh, never, never sleep. Okay, and uh, Bryant, uh, what did you say? Yeah, he wants to have a phone memory in essence. I like that. Love it. My secret power would be to fly, especially like over traffic. Yeah. Okay. Like, like I can never go to the meetups I want to on like the west side or like the east side or anywhere just because it's like, okay, I look on Google Maps and it's like an hour and a half to get there, right? 
and the hour the meetup is like an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we all kind of got to know each other a little bit, and we have about actually an hour and a half to kind of get to the workshop. We're, we'll have a break sometime in the middle, so I think we're in a good spot. So again, here's the Wi-Fi uh, Wi-Fi network username password. Like, take a photo of it or whatever. Um, kind of keep it up, but mo most of our materials are going to be at this GitHub location right here. So here is um, GitHub. This is the, the GitHub um, kind of like workshop page. And so as we, to kind of start out, uh, I'm going to walk through a little bit about what, um, what GitHub is. And then, we're, then we'll go into some command line exercises, OK? So how I like to describe GitHub, it's like, it's like, social, it's like a social network, social media. Not, not really social media, but for collaboration and building software tools or technology tools together. Um, so this is the, the workshop repository. You can see here that this is N. Danielson, um, Nathan Danielson. This is my username. And then right here, intro, CIL, GitHub. Um, GitHub. Uh, you can see that's the name of the repository or the code repository or you know, co co uh, code folder. If I click on my name right here, you can tell, this is my photo, that I really loved <laughs> that Photoshop thing. I think it was the coolest photo I've ever seen. It's like everywhere now. It's my gravatar. Um, <laughs> loved it. Um, you can see a little bit who, who I am. Um, well, I, was, I, I grew up in the area website. So there's like a little social media stuff here. Um, these are other repositories or projects that I, let's just say I'm proud of. Um, so one of them is that yellow brick, that machine learning visualization um, tool in Python that I, I'm a maintainer and helped create. Um, other ones you can see are for like other algorithms, this class workshop that I like, and another one that I do regularly called Intro to Python. Um, if you click down here on repositories, you can see pretty much everything that I've chosen to make public. Um, so this is all the kind of like things I have out there. If we, yeah. I'm searching for M. Danielson and I see no repositories. Is that like the left, top left, is that how I can find you? Are you spelling Danielson S-O-N or S-E-N? S-E-N. Okay. okay. So, Daniel Sen, right? Yeah, S-E-N. So GitHub, maybe I would just, I would Google GitHub and Danielson. It'll be right there up at the top. Okay. Okay. And so I, I just opened up another browser where I'm logged in. So we can see here that th this also has like another kind of like social media, um, there's a lot of information here. Um, so this is kind of what we call the dashboard here. So you see all the repositories on the left. Um, you see recent activity on the things, on some of the projects. Um, there's one that I, for, for the yellow brick that I made comments on about three hours ago. You can see other people that I follow, other developers that I follow and I wanna see what's going on. Well, I see somebody just forked my intro to Python. <laughs> Thank you, Eric Stallings. Um, I also see my coworker, who's amazing, David, just followed me. Thank you, David, um, and other people. So you can kind of, there's like the social media thing where you can follow, follow other developers or potentially other team members and see what they're doing on GitHub. It can be really, really helpful, especially when you are working across multiple code bases, as we often do at Farmers. Okay, so that's kind of like at a high level, um, kind of what, what GitHub is, and we're going to then go into a little later some of the tooling, tooling around it, and how we can interact with it from the command line, and you know, and, and push and pull and share work. Okay, so I'm clicking right now. Again, I, I, I love this photo. <laughs> it doesn't even look like me. I know it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to teach another workshop and then you know get that like the surfer hair or something like that going on. Okay, so this is the so this is the the GitHub repo right here. So 
One thing that you'll notice here is the readme. So a readme is essentially the introduction to the project or the repository. Um, there's usually things in it about what the, the, the architecture of the, of the code, how this project or code or whatever it fits into the larger system, how to get started, right? Um, so it's pretty much someone from day zero or in human terms, day one. <laughs> um, I cracked myself up. Um, um, you know, what they need to know to, to immediately get, get working and have some background about your project. Um, so here we go, introduction to command line, get in GitHub, a workshop to get you started, and you can see the purpose, which might look a little familiar to what you all saw on the, the meetup.com and other pages. So before we kind of um, start digging in, um, so number one, everybody should create a GitHub account at github.com. Hopefully you have internet access. And then Windows users, we, I see a lot of Macs here, maybe a, some Windows devices here. Um, please install one, a, um, it's essentially like a Git um, command line terminal called Git SCM. And then if you're on a Mac and you don't have Git installed, please follow these instructions right here. Okay, so I'll give you all just a couple minutes or like look at me and nod, like if you're, if you're, if you're set up. Is there a way, to, if I can't, I can't get it, log in to your, uh, to, to the network, it won't accept me, but can I, can I connect by the web? I, have a, I can get in through my phone. Uh, yeah. The web through my phone. Mm -hmm. You should be able to access it via a local hotspot. Can, are other people able to get on via the guest net network? So 1.712, is that good enough? Okay, I'm going to walk around. Yeah, um, any recent version of Git should be fine. Okay, looks like folks are almost there. Most people in the room are there. If, if one of your code buddies or somebody who's sitting next to you is having a little bit of an issue, you're welcome to help them because just know in the future they might help you when you add like an extra curly brace or something on your code <laughs> and your linter's not picking it up. <laughs> okay. So I think we're about ready to, to get started with the fun stuff. Okay. So let me just get everything all staged up here nicely. Okay. So it looks like we're almost there. So we're gonna first, we're gonna click into materials here. So I am here on the intro command line Git, GitHub, um, GitHub repository, and I'm gonna click on materials here. So here, just kind of like a file system, um, we, we see all the, the different files listed out. And so we see one, two, you know, one, two, three, four, four. We, we have different files here, and these are they're a .md, which stands for markdown. Um, one of the things that Git, GitHub does that's really nicely is a .markdown file is kind of a simplified way of writing HTML. So it does, it converts some kind of like markdown styling, and then when, when it hits GitHub, GitHub translates that into HTML that is pretty nicely documented. So for working collaboratively on GitHub and other, some other um, kind of social technology uh, tools and platforms out there makes it really nice to have good looking documentation. And I have a resource to, uh, I have a link somewhere here for getting into Markdown a little bit. But it's pretty straightforward. Um, okay. So getting now into, I clicked on one intro command line dot Markdown. Um, and this, this is essentially um, the module on learning the command line. Um, so on, on Mac, it's pretty simple to open the terminal. All you do is open your spotlight, type in terminal, and it will open up. And you can, you can open it up. I'm gonna open up a different one. 
right here. Sorry, I'm moving quickly. Let me make this a little bigger so everybody can see. Um, if you're on a Windows machine and you've installed Git um, SCM, you want to look for Git bash, and that will open up a terminal or a command line prompt that will look very similar to this. Okay, so Windows users out there, have you managed to open Git bash up? <laughs> so if you install Git um, SCM, it comes with Git. Yes, so it's in the setup notes um, in the class repository towards the bottom. Okay. Okay, so what is the command line? So a simple, a very simple way I like to describe the command line is it allows you to directly type text into your computer via the command prompt and do something, right? Sounds really simple, but the counter example is kind of, kind of telling. So before I, I got deep into technology, I would sometimes have projects where I would have, let's just say, 50 or 60 files that I had to move and organize around. Some of us have been through that pain before. So there was a typical workflow where I would have to create a folder, new folder, type in a name. Look, look, look how painful it is already. Name one, and then I'd have to like drag files around, right? Um, drag files around. This is a lot of clicks. Then I have to go in here again. I have to create a new folder. I'm gonna say keeping track of my memes, right? Storing them in there, didn't work. You know, we've, we've all kind of been through this before, right? When we're doing human automation or manual automation, it's really painful. But on the command line, I'm gonna leave this open here to the bottom, it can be a little more straightforward. So I'm gonna to go to the desktop and then I'm gonna move one meme into name memes. It's right there. I'm gonna do another one, move to FE. Look, I have a little autocomplete. I'm gonna move that into, what did I call it? Name, meme, bingo. There, it's all there. Um, so, one meme, just to share. Not sure if I love pair programming or I'm just lonely. Okay. Um, and the next one, um, test and production, what could go wrong? Obviously, you work at highly sane workplaces. Farmers does not do this, by the way. They're saying other, other places. <laughs> I, I'm also mic tier two. Farmers would never, we don't do that. <laughs> I bet other workplaces I've been in, I've, I've seen it before. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, so now we... <laughs> okay, so now I think I've kind of convinced you all why the command line can be really helpful. Um, this is just some basic stuff on the command line. As soon as you get a little more deep, deep, you can write scripts to kind of automate and do this all really, really quickly. Okay. So the general format for a command um, is command, which is the first, um, w which is the command you're trying to run. And then you have options with this like little, little dash in front of that, those little options. One of them is potentially dash F for force in some situations, used with care, um, and then arguments. Um, so probably a good example here of this would be using a node example. So the command would be node, right? Most of y'all should be familiar with node here, right? And then let's just say we have an index, index.js, right? So, so what would the command be, right? The command would be node. And then here in this case, the arguments would be, well, this is, the, this is what we want the command to execute on, index.js, and run the program, right? I don't have anything in index, I don't have index.js yet, but maybe we'll build something like that a little later. What does Node do? So Node is a runtime for JavaScript. Okay, cool. Okay, so 
Um, here's some general tips. So I wrote all of these materials that after you do the workshop, maybe you can go back and read in more depth. Um, but for escape, escaping white, um, for white space and whatnot, um, you want to use a forward slash. And then there's also this really nifty thing called autocomplete, where if you type in the first, um, the first few letters of a file or folder name and then hit tab, it'll autocomplete it out for you, save you a lot of time. So for example, here in, let's see, in the folder I just created here called name. So if I want to see the contents of name, which we'll go into these commands in a little more depth later, if I type N, a and hit tab, it will autocomplete it for you. This will save your fingers a lot of mileage, especially for some of those longer file names. You can also use the up down key on your keyboard to cycle through the history of commands that you've already run. So ls name, I can see what's in there, but if I hit the up button on my keyboard, you can see other things that I just ran. It can save you some time, especially when you're like, how did I do that? But there's other ways of seeing how I can do that a little bit later. That I'll show you a little bit later. I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Don't steal my thunder yet. <laughs> okay. So there's also one that's really helpful called the man command, which starts for manual. So it gives you um, some, some very detailed or short manual about the command and what it does. So this is one of the things that when I'm on long airplane rides and I don't feel like paying for Wi-Fi, this is what I do. So I will type in man and something like node. If you look at it, you can see the BSD general commands for node. So as you go through, you can read all about node.js, what it is, options, how to run it, and learn a little bit more about what you're working on. Kind of cool. OK. An another similar um, command you can run is node dash dash help. And this is kind of more of an abbreviation, uh, abbreviated manual. So when, you, when I type that in, it kind of just print, <laughs> well, it prints a lot of stuff out. Um, but it prints out essentially a very, very short like help description for like how to use Node, blah, blah, blah. Um, other things that we saw in like on Man a little bit before. All kinds of stuff. Throat appreciation is one of my favorite commands to throw into Node. Keeps co code nice and clean. <laughs> Keep that technical data under control. Okay, so file paths. So now we talked a little bit about running commands. Now let's talk about navigating the file system a little bit. So um, a path is a location or a directory on, on your computer. Um, for example, on my local computer, when I clone this, when I move this file down, one intro command line, blah, 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 dot markdown, this is the absolute path, as we call it, or the, the path or, uh, we, or the file tree from going from, let's just say, the furthest folder from the, the root of the hard drive, kind of where you're, your, your, what, what do you call it? The starting place where all the folders are, and then kind of navigating down from users and Danielson, projects, this folder that looks kind of f familiar, materials, whatnot. So this is the absolute path, essentially from the start of how files are, are tracked and bucketed all the way down to where it is. So um, again, um, um, on my computer right here, this is the absolute path for, for this, this class repository we're working on. Relative paths are, are a little different. So right now, let me go to projects, intro, command line, oh, command line. Um, so now that we're, I'm currently in, in this directory here, let me hit clear to make it kind of, so we're currently in this directory, but let's just say that there's another project that I don't wanna to have to go to the beginning and navigate all the way back to. So how can I navigate relative to where I am? So 
Um, the syntax for that, or the syntax for how to do that, is essentially, um, OK. So we're in this absolute path. So the current path is re rep represented by a dot. So the dot is the path in your current uh, working directory. So for example, here, when I do, um, in this current working directory, dot represents currently where you are, and then forward slash readme. From this same location that I'm at, if I do dot materials, one intro command line dot markdown, um, and from that current directory, I can navigate or I can read that. Um, the relative path to another project would be dot dot. So on my file system, if I let me open it up, open dot on Max, kind of a helpful little command here. So here in my command line, the current working directory that I'm at is I'm currently located right here. But if I wanted to go to ice cream shop, which we will be working on a little later, building our own ice cream shop in Git, I want to take, so cr the current directory is a dot, but if I want to go back a directory, it's a dot dot. So it's like one step for, one step for where you currently are and then one back to get there. So I can do it on the, um, the, the, the window or the, the GUI or graphic user interface by essentially clicking on ice cream shop here, and then it'll open up all the flavors.csv. But if I want to do it, if I want to move, or if I want to change directories, it's dot dot ice cream shop. Oh, that's not really good. So dot dot ice cream shop, and then PWD, which we'll go getting to right next is print working directory, moving there. And now I've navigated relatively from where I was to where I want to go back one directory with a dot dot. And now I'm currently in projects ice cream shop. Okay, so I noticed I made a little typo here on nice ice cream shop. Um, okay. So now that we've kind of covered what, what paths are, which are really important for navigating on the command line, we're going to go into some basic commands for um, kind of working your way around a little bit. So first, we're going to start with PWD. So PWD stands for Print Working Directory. You've seen me do that a couple times. So PWD shows the absolute, it returns the absolute path of the current working directory or where my terminal is in the, like, the file system. LS, what does LS stand for? Mm -hmm. so, I, so LS, that lists everything in my current working directory, but we can get a little more specific with it. Okay, so these are all the, we're, we're gonna go in more depth here, but this is like the non-hidden files. And we'll, I'll show you that in just a second. So ls, ls-a, lists them all. But this is not a good, good example here. I'm, I'm gonna, let me move back to intro command line and we'll see some more hidden files there. Okay, so. Yeah, so ls shows some of the files, right? But when ls-a, what, what do you all think a stands for? All. all. We see here that there's a dot in front of them. So one of the syntax in the, in the system for files that users normally can't see is a dot in front of that, right? So here in this intro to command line Git, GitHub repository in this folder, I have a couple hidden files that you can't see when I open it locally. So open dot. So open dot, I can't see any of these. These are not meant to be like seen by users. And okay, normal users. When we're developers, maybe we kind of want to see everything, right? So what is dot .git? Well, dot .git is this, ver this repository is under version control with git. And so if I do ls.git, when I look in there, I see all these things that say like uppercase, config, things like that. So this is essentially the, the object, this is kind of the database for how Git is managing version control, which we're gonna get into pretty soon. But what I would suggest is as you, you all are kind of 
intro level with Git and command line and stuff like this, don't mess with this. <laughs> Nothing good can probably happen at first. I've messed with it before, and I just had to throw it all out and start over again. Handle with care. <laughs> with the command line, there's great power, but also great responsibility. <laughs> what was your question? Yeah. Because we have people. Okay. Yeah. So I, I, yeah. So for Macs, open is it, 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 it's specific to Mac. Okay. Um, so showing all. So ls a. We can see all of them. Um, when we go to ls dash l, we get some extra information here. Let me clear clear the screen. So when we go through with ls dash a. Starting over kind of right to left, we have the file name. I, I believe this is when it was last modified. Yep, last modified. I was working on something, materials today. Um, I think this is the size of it in kilobits, a, a file size here. This is the staff, this is the permission level on this computer. I'm a staff. This is, this is my farmer's computer. This is my username here. Um, and this is the number of links to this file that exist out there. Kind of interesting. And then this one right here is the file permissions. So this is what you can do with it. For some of them, you can read, write, um, read, read. Um, this is stuff that I use a different kind of syntax with chmod for it normally. But it's just good to know that if you decide to Google this at some point, what this means you're probably going to come up with how to set permissions to other folders. So that's the secret of programming, everyone. <laughs> Getting really good at Googling. OK. So next, um, ls asterisk. Yeah, go ahead. Probably other, I, I'm, ass, I'm assuming other files. I, I, I'm not actually sure internally how it works. I, I'm thinking it's probably file system references to it. So for example, if we go into my, my assumption, if we go into, let's just say bad version control, um, there's a number of files in here. And then probably in this directory, there is you know a, a couple references to it. So I'm not exactly sure how it works under the hood. I, I just thought it's kind of interesting to share what those numbers mean. And hit clear right there. So lastly, uh, ls asterisk. What a asterisk means is kind of it's like a wildcard character, which kind of means everything. So in this case, it'll show all the the files and list of folders and everything in this um, working directory. So here, ls dash a that I did here. So you can see um, what's in this folder here. Bad ver version control example contributors which hopefully everyone's going to be a contributor a little later, what's in data, and then what's in materials. Kind of a, a quick way to kind of see everything that's on your, um, in your folders, but also potentially kind of annoying because there might be way too much stuff in there, right? So moving down. So do you have a control op option for them to say I want to see only? So, so that's a good question. So what I would probably do is I would do man ls and read up on how to control it. I, I very, very rarely, I don't think I've ever really used ls. Mm -hmm. OK. So one of the things that um, you all just notice me do is clear. So clear essentially clears the terminal, makes it really um, a lot easier to kind of navigate. Sometimes when you are printing lots of stuff out, maybe you just want to start again at the top of the terminal to kind of get a fresh start. Next, history. This is what I kind of mentioned to you all before. History is the command that shows you all the previous commands that you've run. So you can kind of scroll up a little bit and see what was run and what, what not. Um, Handy tip, for example, um, this number 530, if I put an exclamation mark in front of it, and 530, it will go back and it will run that command. 
it's very helpful when you don't want to have to retype something out that's really long. Also, along the same lines, when you do double exclamation, it prints out the last, it does the last command you just, you, you just wrote, which can be potentially dangerous. Is it the same as like the upper row? Yeah, so it actually, it goes back in, it goes back in your history. Yeah, it actually runs it. Mm -hmm. right. Exclamation, exclamation, what, yeah. Okay. So now let's get to navigating around a little bit. So we are in the, in a folder, you, you all are probably in your home directory or whatnot. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate back a couple here, back to my home, back to my, my home directory. I'm going to clear it just to make it really um, easy to read. And now I'm going to CD or change directory into um, a, a path or a file lo uh, location that I want to go. So in this case, I want to go to the desktop. So I'm going to CD desktop. And you'll notice that I type DE and I hit the tab button. And I get some options here, but to autocomplete. So I don't have to type everything repeatedly. Oh, so Q. 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 Oh, you, you did the man page, right? So you did like man node. Yeah, so apologies, didn't tell you how to escape. So as you are navigating this and reading this, I definitely, when I got, <laughs> I got trapped a couple times on the command line, I guess people shaking their head and laughing, Q. <laughs> yeah, Q for quit. Because when, when I first started getting into it, I would have to close the terminal and be like, dang, I got into it again. Yeah, there have definitely been some people who have been through this before. <laughs> okay, um, cool. So now we're in the desktop, PWD, desktop. We know where we're at. Now I'm going to move back to back a directory with the dot dot. So dot for, for one step where I currently am and dot, the second dot for taking a step back. So you can see right here, PWD for current working directory. I'm in the desktop, but I want to get back into my home directory of Nathan.Danielson. So I'm going to do CD dot dot. So the first dot is for where I'm at, and then the second dot is for moving one back. Yeah. How do you get two options then on desktop on the first line? Okay, yeah. Good, great question. So what it was is when I hit, when I hit tab, autocomplete didn't know which one to autocomplete to. Because I have one, one folder here called demo, the other one called desktop. Oh, so when you do this? How did you get two options behind the second Yeah, so in my, okay, great question. So when I open this up, you can see here that I have desktop and I have demo. And so for autocomplete, it didn't know which one to choose. So it gave me two options for it. So Oh, you're right. So I typed DE here. And then I said, oh, I want to go to desktop. So I put S there. And then, then a tab. And then autocomplete it there. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure how it's working under the hood, um, but it's, it, it, yeah, it's doing some kind of, it might be grep or some kind of, you know, regex under the hood here. And then it's saying, hey, we have two options here. And then I gave it another, op I put S in there and then hit tab again and it knew to select that. Apologies if I went through that a little quickly. Okay. <laughs> when we click enter, it says there is no directory DE. No directory. Okay. 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 Well, I'll, 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 we have some exercises coming up really shortly, and I can walk around and make sure everybody is kind of covered with it. Okay. So now we kind of covered um, CD. So now that I'm on the, I'm a, a CD'd into the desktop or change directories into the desktop, I'm going to make a directory. 
So mkdir for make directory, and I'm going to create a directory called um, hello world. And as I'm on the desktop, we should see it appear here on the right. Okay, so hello world. Cool. Next, I'm going to create a file, also here on the desktop. And I'm going to touch. So how I like to describe touching or touching, creating things, is I'm sure you've all seen like the Sistine Chapel where God is reaching over and touching man to create him, right? Yeah. Look, I'm reenacting it here. <laughs> touch to create a file. You're never going to forget it now. So I'm going to touch or create a, a file um, called hello.txt. Touch, touch to create and creating an empty file here. Last, next, I'm going to remove the file. So in the instructions here, um, I'm going to put the I flag in it. The I flag prompts for confirmation, which stands for interactive. So rm-i, and then I'm going to put the name of the file in. That txt. So this is the command, this is the flag, and this is the argument based on that example before. So when I hit enter here, it's going to prompt to ask remove that. Yeah. So the same. Yeah. So this is this is one of those things with with a command line. You're given you're given a lot of power. And if you remove something, a file or a folder or your project <laughs> that you've been working on, you're not getting it back. So that's why I recommend for those of you, this is maybe your first evening with the command line, to use remove with care, because you're not going to get it back. <laughs> OK. Yeah, so when you put I in, it actually well, we don't have anything created. Um, touch, um, test again. Txt. Oops. Uh, Rm i. Test again. Txt. You actually have to confirm with an i. If you want to remove like a big directory with hundreds of files, maybe you don't want to go and do like you know why multiple times. Okay. Um, so here's some other commands here for. Um, move, copy, zip, unzip, and I and um, g g zip unzip for Windows users. And I prepared some exercises um, for you and your code buddy to, to go through. Yeah. Oh, oh sorry. So I, I skipped over that for removing folders. Um, this is actually part of the exercise here. Putting the the i r. Um, removes a folder and everything within it. So um, dash F is for forcing something, which um, we don't have time to go into to all of that necessarily at the moment. But whenever you're forcing something, you really want to think if that's a good idea or not. Um, so I'm going to give you all maybe about 10 minutes or so to work through most of these exercises, and I'll be floating around. Feel free to grab some water, get some more food, or go to the bathroom if you need. Yeah, they're in um, yeah, materials um, one. OK, everybody. So there, there's a reason why I didn't cover move and copy and zip unzip in depth. Everybody, just listen for a second. Um, the reason that I didn't cover these commands here is because, OK, I'm glad everybody's really excited. I just want to, got to say this. Part of, part of learning a new technology, the command line programming in general, is you got to get good at learning and teaching yourself and reading it. So I specifically did not go over these just to let you kind of like I'll struggle a little bit. But in a safe environment where you have code buddies and you have people that have been there before to do it. So just get really familiar <laughs> with reading the documentation because <laughs> it'll tell you how to do it. Anyway, please continue. OK, um, so the next section we're going to do is going to be on Git and working on Git. Um, but I wanted to call your attention that I've prepared some advanced command line homework that is quite challenging. Um, and it, that's in 
um, number four command line advanced on Markdown. And I've also put some other resources that I really like here. Um, one's a command line crash course, and the other one is the GNU Bash manual, um, which is essentially um, Bash is kind of the, the syntax and the language of the, of the terminal or the command line. Um, and going through this manual here, here allows you to write some very powerful scripting that are very similar to kind of what you've learned here today in this like intro command line here. Um, and just to give you an overview here, advanced command line, advanced commands like find, head tail, cat, grep, word count, piping, stuff together. And then other command line utilities like sudo, nano, vim, and then some fairly challenging exercises around like data. Yeah, that's a, that, that, that's a script, a bash script. <laughs> that's a script. OK. So now moving on to Git. So what is Git? The official um, definition of Git is Git is a free and, o free and open distributed version control system. Every developer and others has a working copy of the code and a full change, change history on their local machine. Um, the first commit of Git was by, <laughs> OK. Git was created by Linus Torvalds as part of like the Linux kernel, and the first commit of Git was of Git itself. Interesting kind of like recursive thing right there, right? Kind of, yeah, kind of like Inception the movie, right? You keep going down layers. I don't get it. Okay, um, so I think the kind of the best way to explain how Git operates is to actually visually navigate through GitHub. So I'm going to open another window here. And we're just going to do this simply in this, this repository here. OK. So this is the GitHub repository. And kind of the old school version control, I would say before version control was a thing. And what I encountered in my previous professional life was version control was done through a series of files like this. So you'd have a final report, .txt. That might be 50 pages of work. Oops, careful. And then someone else would take a look at it. And then they would say revised. And then somebody else would take a look at it and be revised June 1. Right? You see where I'm going with this? And then somebody else would take a look. And then it would just keep going. And there would be a final. And then there would be a final v4. This is like convention. I mean, there's not a convention here. <laughs> and then you, you look at it like a week later, and you're like, which, which one is the final one? Is it submitted? Or is it final? Or you know, which one is it? And then you notice like the dates when they were edited. They're, like, they're all the same, or they're all different. So like, what is it? So this is the bad version control. Um, how Git does version control. is there's this kind of idea of a commit, a git commit. And when you, when you click on here, I have 103 commits on this. But a commit is essentially, it's, what's the, how, how do I describe this effectively? So a commit is the change, it's the difference or the change from the previous version you have, you had of it. So right here, I made a commit that I called updates. And I made one change on one file, and I committed that in. Right? So that was one change, or the next version that I saved and I committed, and I pushed up or I sent to GitHub, there was this one change or this one commit that said, hey, this is the new version of it. When I go to the previous commit up there, well, I didn't do a good, good job of that, um, but adding up updates. <laughs> you can see that before that version, this commit reflects the previous version that I had here. So I made some changes in number one, intro command line. The green is what, the, what is in the new version that was committed in, and the red or the pink here is what was removed. 
sort of branch? No, the branch is a different thing. So this is a commit. So a commit is essentially the difference between the, the, the current commit is the current version you have, right? They call that the head in Git, but then the previous commit is the previous version you have. So a git, is, a, a, commit, a git commit is really just a difference or a change between versions. So as we go through and we kind of stack this up continually, this is actually a, a data, data structure here, we have this whole stack of commits. That as we go back in time, these are different versions of the, the code base or the repository. So if you want to recreate the latest level, you apply all the commits that were. There we go. So if I go right back to the original commits, I keep going old, older, you see the first commit here. And the co code base here at this point, it was essentially just a readme. So starting at zero or the first commit that I did, building up this course curriculum. I first made a first commit, then I, I added a file for the license, MIT license, so you all feel free to do whatever you want, which created a file. So now I had two files. The next commit that I stacked on top of that, the next version I had of this workshop was then adding in class instructions, where I added a commit where I removed this title from the readme and I added this all up. And, it, and I made changes and commits and stacked it up continually until I'm now at the cur current version I'm at. So that is essentially git and a git commit, right? At a high level, abstract level, um, current version and all the commits, it's just a, a stack or a sequence of all the different changes or diffs that have accumulated until you're in your current version. Yeah. Um, I, can, I can always talk. Please go. The only one thing that's always confused me about Git is uh, the commits that you're referring to. So if you accumulate all the changes in, in, in uh, let's say, multiple codes in, in the same branch or directly, right? If you were to revert back a change, is it revert back at the file level you're specifying or at the directory level? In other words, if you have, uh, let's say, a SQL code, you know, five different scripts or whatever, maybe PowerShell, um, if you're saving it and you have five different disks and you want to revert back to the fourth, is it the entire file under that change in the revert or is it just that file for any specific? So, uh, so excellent question. That's actually what I'm going to be covering in the more intermediate advanced <laughs> workshop that I'm putting together. Um, we're, we're going to be starting next with doing a git init. <laughs> um, and I can, I'm, I'm, help, I'm very hap happy to point you um, to some resources to understand like a revert and actually how a commit is structured and how to kind of revert stuff out. Okay. So, uh, but excellent question right there. Um, so, okay. So starting a new project. So we're going to create an ice cream shop in Git. So let's open our command line. And I'm going to clear it. And then I'm going to, I'm actually just going to open a fresh, fresh command line so I can demonstrate this. <laughs> OK. <laughs> That's some good noise right there. So I'm going to, I'm going to move over to the desktop. So one of the things that I've done here is this little tilde symbol. This tilde is actually a shortcut for your home directory. Let me make this a little bigger so everybody can see. So this little tilde above your tab on, on Macs and probably to the left of your one button, this is like a shortcut for your home directory. So in that, that case, it would be my folder, my user folder and Danielson forward slash desktop. So I'm CD in, CDing into there. And I'm going to make a directory. I'm going to call it ice cream shop. And just to have a little sanity checking, it's, there you go. It appears right on my desktop. And I'm going to CD into ice cream shop. And I'm going to also open it in my GUI just 
for, for you non-believers out here in the command line, you can see what's going on. And it's open right there. And next I'm going to do get init. So, so get init, we have this really nice message that is formed saying initialized empty git repository in this location, which is the absolute path users in Danielson desktop ice cream shot slash dot git. And you'll notice because there's a dot git in front of it, we can't see anything in this folder. So to just confirm that it's there, I'm going to do an ls a. Oh, wait. Sorry. My, my mistake. That a. And I can see everything. So even though there's nothing there, I can see a dot git. So git has been in initialized. Next thing we need to do, and this is part of this configuring git, is we need to tell git who we are. So we are going to um, put git config, you know, follow this and put your name and your email in. All right? So git config, global, let me make this a little smaller, global user.name, and I'm just going to follow the convention right here. I, I suggest doing it now. Because otherwise, when we start committing things and working through it, you're going to have to do it anyway. It might be a little confusing. And don't, don't put my name in there. Put your own name and email. <laughs> so are you going to speak for the global option? Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm just going to assume that you're probably going to want to do the global, global option on your computer. So that, that allows you access from yeah, so, different, different uh, Yeah, so you have Git installed on your computer, and then any time you initialize another Git repository, it'll already be set up for you. And you can check that it's been set correctly after the fact by just typing in git config dash global user dot name and the same thing with email here. Okay, so what we're going to do, so what we're going to do is we're going to add an ice cream, um, ice cream dot txt. Ice cream dot txt. So we're going to touch it and create and create that. So we see here in the GUI that that has now been created. Next. Git doesn't, does not know about this file yet, so we're going to git add icecream.txt. So now that we've added it, we can now confirm or check that git is aware of it. So git status. So right here we see um, a, some, some useful information. So we see on branch master, which we're not going to talk about branches tonight because we don't have time and that. Yeah, it's a little more complicated for beginners. Um, so we see no commits yet, number one. And we see changes to be committed. So we see that now in the green, Git knows that there's a new file, icecream.txt. OK? So now we have changes to be committed, or we're going to create a commit. Um, we are going to do git commit. Dash M, what do you think dash M stands for? Uh, we're we're going to write a message. And we're going to add the message added an important file. So after that, we have kind of an interesting message that comes up. So we see master root commit. We're, we're not going to talk about that right now. We see this alphanumeric number right here where there's B and some numbers here, and then the, me the message that we wrote, added an important file. And we see some other information here. One file changed, insertions, deletions, and then create mode, icecream.txt. OK, so now an exercise for you to do. Um, create a file named sauces.txt. 
um, add, it, add it to Git or Git staging, which we'll talk about in just a second, and then commit it with the message. And then check that we made it in. Okay, so let's run through this real quick. I know we're starting to run out of time. Um, so we're going to create a file named, um, we're going to touch sauces.txt. So touching, creating it. We're going to git add that. So we're going to add that so that git knows to track that. And then we're going to commit it with m adding sauces. And here we see that we got this message, adding sauces. Um, but what I forgot to do is go over what git log is. So now that we have two commits, we can see the history, just like we did on GitHub, of all the commits that are part of the project now. So if we do git log, git log shows essentially the history or the log of all the commits that we've made. So going here, we can see that we added sauces here. We see a commit that should look, these, these, these alphanumeric number right here, 2459 right here in the front, looks kind of similar to when we made the commit. We see the author, which this is my, <laughs> my farmer's computer here, um, Nathan Danielson at farmersinsurance.com, and we see the date that it happened, as well as the, the message we wrote. No, so this, is, so this is essentially the log of all the commits we've made. There are, there are other deeper ways of showing all the, the changes specifically that we made. Um, that we're just not going to have time, or this kind of, it's, it's a little more of an advanced topic um, for this workshop, and we just don't have time tonight. And then next we have the second commit here, um, the initial one of added an imported file. Okay. So we only have, let's just say, five minutes or so left. And I want to be respectful of everybody's time. Um, so other common workflows, changing a file, right? So we've, um, we have an ice cream file. If we do ls, we have ice cream.txt and sauces.txt. So I'm going to open my code editor and look and make a change to this file here. So I'm going to open it with text edit. Pretty straightforward, and I'm going to add an ice cream that I like. So I'm a fan of vanilla. So I'm going to close that. It's been saved. And when I do a get status on it, we see that Git has noticed that something has changed. Right? So we see it in, in red that ice cream.txt has been modified. So we see that these changes to ice cream.txt, they're not staged to commit. So staging in Git is the analogy that I like to use is you all might remember when you were younger, maybe in elementary or high school, people talked about your permanent record following you around for the rest of your life. <laughs> remember this? A permanent record has not followed me around. <laughs> Payal was out of the room. Oh, wait, I'm. I'm mic'd. So anyway, it's out there. But um, when you commit something, you're adding it to the permanent record in Git. And then as soon as you make a commit in Git, or you've committed it in, you're committed to that file version, it's probably not a good idea to change history. You can go back and you can edit your commits and you can make things look or fix them. Probably not a good idea and your teammates are probably not going to like you when it breaks their stuff. Probably not a good idea. Changing history is bad. Star Trek, bad. <laughs> in Git, it's also a bad idea. So the idea of staging is going back to that analogy I made for your permanent record in school. So remember that, that time period in college or high school or something like that where your teacher told you what your grades are? Those are like staged, right? So they're not permanent yet. They haven't been committed yet, but they're like right up and the curtains ready to go on stage and being committed to doing that performance, but it's not committed yet. So when things are staged, we don't have anything changed. We don't have anything uh, staged here, but when we do git add ice cream.txt, git status, we see that these 
changes are to be committed or these are what are being staged to be going in your permanent record or to be committed into your permanent record at that point. Does that make sense? So now that I've made that change, I'm going to commit M added my favorite flavors. And now that I made that git commit, git log, um, added my favorite flavors, there it is. So we can also do it with multiple files as well, which we don't have time to go through exactly, but it's pretty straightforward. Um, and then we can also remove something by, from staging with git, with git reset. So if I open this up again, oops. And I say French vanilla, get status, and then I accidentally add that in, ice cream. We see that that's staged to be committed. If I do get reset ice cream.txt, I can back it out. So this is unstaged changes after reset. So unfortunately, it's 9 o'clock, um, and we ran out of, out of time, started just a little late, which is all good because the pizza was excellent. Um, I have also um, have instructions here for sharing your, your work on GitHub um, that are pretty, pretty straightforward to do um, and deep diving a little more into Git as well as some exercises. Um, next, there is a section on GitHub and how to interact with it um, with pushing and forking and whatnot. Um, all of these materials, um, I, I designed and wrote them so to explain them in a workshop, but you all should be, um, feel very comfortable to go ahead and do them at your own pace. And last... Is this something about merging, even if you don't go into detail? How does it work? Okay, so here on the Git Advanced, which is where I was going next. <laughs> um, so get advanced, let's dive to, to, to dive into some more advanced topics. This is on creating branches here. Um, creating branches, adding, adding code to it, pulling a branch down, and then how to merge. So soon, the, we, we, we don't necessarily have a lot of time. We don't, we're out of time to cover branching and strategizing. But after you've created a branch, um, you, you, and you've, you, then you move to another branch, you can merge that in by git merge add something. So can you just say, how, what does it do? How, how does it know what to, to actually do for merging? OK, so essentially what a merge is, a merge is so you have, it's going to get complicated because we haven't talked about branches here. So you, so you, have, one set, so you have one set of commits, that's your, that's your master branch. And then you have another branch, let's call that um, develop or adding adding another feature, adding another feature. So the baseline of those branches are the same, except the add a feature branch has two commits. So when you're merging, you're essentially what you're doing is you're adding those two commits or you're pulling them in to master, to, to essentially stack right on top. So it doesn't, it doesn't do any complex retrofitting. Um, it, it can get complex um, in the fact that if there's a merge conflict or if there's two lines that are just like, you know, there's the same line, li same line of code or text or whatever, and there's like a difference or there's like white space differences, that's a merge conflict. They get, can be pretty hairy to sort out. So an example of merging something here is, um, in this case, this is a pull request on GitHub. I know we're starting to run out of time a little bit. So the master branch is what you've all been working off of. And then I created an advanced git um, branch right here. And a pull request is essentially a request to pull in commits or changes. So here in the commit, you can see that I have one commit here, adding in more advanced exercises. And you can see the diff that I have here, right? So these are the differences. This is the commit. And what the merge is essentially doing 
is it's bringing that one commit in and pulling that into the master branch or to the other branch and stacking it right on top. And if there's any conflicts, then GitHub, just by its nature, won't allow you to, to, to merge or, or, or pull it in, that you have to sort out. What's that? It'll tell you why. It'll tell you why. In very verbose things that will break your code base. <laughs> So you cannot direct it how to merge some large compilators or whatever. Like I'm thinking like uh, other source control tools that I've used, like you know, the Microsoft. Uh, it allows you to, to make some decision how to merge. How yeah, to yeah. I mean, get the, you know, we don't have we don't have time to cover it in an intro level. Okay. But there are a bunch of different strategies for handling merge conflicts and, and merging things, and a lot of different options you can go in depth on. So the more so if you say GitHub.com, is it available to everyone? Okay. So so what do you do with you to better proprietary code? So that that's a great question. So by default. GitHub has public and private repositories that you can create private repositories that are not available to the general public. But based upon your own risk tolerance and how secretive it is, um, for example, farmers, we have our own enterprise GitHub because we don't want any risk that our information or our source code could be released in the world, which it's obviously a very sound enterprise or any small business should think really carefully, any business should think really carefully about putting proprietary code on the cloud or GitHub or whatnot. So there's something to think about. Yeah, but, but there, there might be some like, like tools or collaboration that might be missing. You can do it totally individually on your, on your desktop or your computer, um, but there's also other self-hosted like instances, for example, GitHub Enterprise or other competitors out there like GitLab or things like that where you can have on-prem like hosted GitHub or Git, GitHub or Git type collaboration tools. So anyway, we're about, I'm, oh, I'm five minutes over, seven minutes over, apologies. But yeah, thank you all. Um, yeah.